up or no? No, I guess it's on. Let me just all right. Um, yeah, no, leadership's been like the main thing, just trying to take that next step. My coach actually runs his own leadership company, so he's been having meetings with us as captains, like trying to like teach us different methods and stuff like that. So yeah, that's dope. It's been cool. So yeah, that's cool for sure. All right. Then let's uh continue this in the actual show. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. Welcome back, everybody. TCP podcast is Tyler Clark with TC Performance. Appreciate you guys for tuning back in. I got my guy Danny Cooper on for uh, number two, uh, round two. So real quick, if you guys obviously don't know who Danny is, go back and listen to episode one. But if you want to give like a quick breakdown of who you are, kind of uh, what you do, where you've been and so on. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. So long story short, I'm a basketball trainer. Um, I work with youth to pro guys. I also play division three basketball, Moravian university and content creator, do YouTube, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yes, sir. And so I'm trying to think, so for, for listeners, like weekly listeners that know where you were at last time that we talked, why don't you just kind of update us on what's happened in the past, I guess, year or so that we've talked um because if you guys do follow him on instagram a lot has happened and he's he's been around he's, he's seen some people trained some people and just update us a little bit yeah so i think we last talked maybe towards the end of my season um last year so had a pretty big off season pretty much traveled all over going to different conferences and helping different players um main guy i got to work with this summer was mac mcclung it was really cool got to go to his hometown a couple of times um, went out in Vegas to the summer league to be with him. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was a really cool experience getting to work firsthand with a, a guy of that caliber. So um, that was, that was pretty much like the main thing, I guess, this summer that I did. I also got to work with um, Lamar Stevens of the Cavs. So that was pretty cool. This summer was really, I saw like a big, uh, a big leap in kind of, the players that I worked with, I worked with a lot of high level college and, and pro guys. So that's, that's always been my goal kind of from the start. So it was kind of really cool to see that come to fruition this summer. So. Not for sure, bro. See, like I, I followed along a bunch of the vlogs and all, obviously all the videos that you were posting with Mac, it just looked like a good time to have that relationship with him. Like genuinely, like that's your boy, but you're also training him and for him to have that trust in you too. I'm sure that was a, that was a cool feeling. Cause you helped out with, uh, he did a camp back home too. And right. And he asked you to help out. Yeah, so yeah, the first time that I went down to Gate City, he was having his his camp. He had like 200 kids and he was like, I need some people to come down and help. So I was like, I'll come and we'll come. We'll work out for a couple of days. So I drove down eight hours to Gate City with my boy actually came with me. He's kind of like my right hand man now, Nate. And uh, yeah, we went, helped out, stayed with him for, I think, three or four days and kind of just build a relationship from there. And he's, he's one of my best friends now, considering family. So it's cool how that works. No, nah, that really is cool. And that's like one of this, one of the underrated aspects of training. It's like, you, you do get a lot of time with these guys or girls or whoever you're training and you're able to build a relationship with them like that. So that's definitely dope. Um, first question I want to ask though about that experience is obviously as a play, player yourself, you're in a unique situation where you're, you're constantly learning from, you know, anybody that you're training, right? especially a guy who's in the G league, who's in, in the NBA, like high level college guys, like what, what were some of the biggest things that you took away from Mac as a player, which maybe a routine, his workout regimen, like lifting or his mentality? Like what, what are some of the biggest things that you took away as a player? Yeah, I think mentality wise. So it's funny. We would play one-on-one -on -one sometimes and he would always say to me, bro, stop going so fast. And like, I always noticed I did that, but when he pointed it out, I really realized it. The main thing I got from his game is you think he's so fast because he's always so explosive, but he plays at his own speed and his own pace. So if you watch his highlights, like when he comes off the pick and roll, it's, it's very rare that the defense is dictating what he's doing. He's controlling it. He's putting the guy in jail. He's kind of controlling the tempo. So that was really the main thing that I took from that. And I'm trying to put that, put that into my game. And then just mentality wise, like, just getting your work in every day, no matter how you're feeling. Like you, in, in some of the videos, like you mentioned, we were up at six or 7 a.m. And he was like, 
we don't do this for the fame. It was like a whole one minute kind of thing in the car. He's like, we don't do this for the fame, not the money. Like we do this because we love it. Just like no matter how big you get and how much money you start to make, like keeping your head straight and focusing on the work day in and day out. That's kind of the main stuff I, I got from him. So not for sure. That's that's dope to see firsthand. What was it like to see his preparation in uh, in Vegas? Because obviously that's like for a guy like him who's kind of in between. He, he played really well in the G League, but obviously he didn't get a bunch of opportunity in the NBA yet. So like yeah. for a guy like him, he needs to be ultra focused, and like that's a great opportunity for him. So what was the what was the motivation and the preparation there? Yeah, so it was it was really cool to see that because he was he was locked in. Like for these fringe NBA guys, that summer league is it's their job interview. Like if you don't play well, you're probably going overseas or back to the G league. So, I mean, his routine every day, pretty much would wake up, they would have a team meal and he would do a, a kind of like a 15, 20 minute lift just to feel good. And we actually did that with him a couple of days. Um, and he would probably just rest up and then, and then go to the game. But like, he didn't go out. He was just, you know, locked in. We would just play cards in the hotel room pretty much like just, I think the big thing for him was just being surrounded by good energy and good people and keeping his mind right. Because in Vegas, obviously there's so many distractions. So, um, you know, it, it would be tempting to go out to clubs and parties and stuff like that, but no, he was locked in for sure. And, and it showed in, in his play. So. Cool. Yeah, bro. Everything that I saw, he was killing. And it, it it's, yeah. it was cool to see like, not everybody that follows him follows you obviously, but for guys that do, it was cool to see that you were working with him pretty closely and for him to have a really good summer. So I, I thought that was, I'm sure like at least a little bit in your mind, you're like, this is, this is dope to see that he's having a good season or a, a good summer after some work. <laughs> no, it was, it was cool for sure. But like, it's, I mean, also one of the biggest things working with these guys is like, you, you can only, I always say this, you can only do so much. Like yeah. Max already so talented. He's so good. Like, I'm really just there to help out that that's kind of how I put it. Like, I don't, I don't, it's obviously a good feeling and it's nice, but like, I, I can't take any credit for any of that. It's like, he literally, he had all the talent. I'm just driving down to his hometown, helping him out and, and trying to give him a few pointers, but that's all him. So no, nah, for sure. And that's actually, that was going to be my next question. Like, I, I guess two questions. One, how, how did you even come into contact with Mac? How did that, uh, how did that happen? And then two, what was your thought process whenever it was it, it came to the time like all right i'm going to train mac i know that you've you've helped out and um and worked out with some some pro guys before but like what is the approach there yeah so i interned for drew hanlon um in philly actually for four weeks during max nba pre-draft that was in may and june of 2021 so like over a year ago and drew actually had I actually told this story the other day drew had his sister's wedding and I think he was gone for two or three days. So I got to be with Mac just kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And that's where we really built that relationship. And I got to develop my confidence really working with high-level players and then kind of stayed in touch from there throughout the season. Um, and then when I was in LA for the PDC, actually, um, in April, I connected with him for a day there. And then that's when he was like, yo, you should come to my hometown and work out and help me with my camp. And that's kind of how that happened there. Um, and then what was the second part of your question? So, <clears throat> excuse me. Obviously, you train like a variety of players, but whenever it comes to pro guys, pro girls, like what is your approach to training? Like you said, because sometimes it's not always yeah. the training, but it's more so just helping them out. So we're, like, what was your approach there? Yeah, it's it's interesting because I feel like this is, is constantly ebbs and flows. Um, and I feel like I kind of take a couple different approaches. It's, it's mainly just like, obviously dissecting their film, but kind of asking them like what they feel like they should get better at. And that's, that's something I actually wrote in the group chat the other day that I'm kind of tackling right now. It's like, how do you, as a 22 year old and, and I guess, you know, not established trainer yet, how do I like say what I want to do and, and think he should get better at while also respecting that he's in the NBA and he knows kind of what he needs to work on. So finding that balance, to be honest, I don't really have the answer. I'm really trying to work on that. But what I kind of do is just say, like, we watch the film, say, what do you think you need to get better at and kind of cater it towards what he thinks. But I'm working on that level of saying, I have the confidence to say, you need to work on this. Let's do it. So, yeah. No, I, I haven't been in a position, obviously, where I've trained like high level pro guys. Pro guys. There's a couple guys like 
friends of mine that are that have played pro or do play pro and i've i've helped out there but for like it's i feel like it's just a different type of mentality with those kind of guys and obviously max seems like a really good dude and i'm sure lamar stevens was too but you might be in a situation where that guy doesn't respect you and you really do need to gain that respect so i i'm sure that is going to be difficult in some situations as you continue to go up but um but yeah my my next question is like it within that same week or month right you, you obviously had mac a lot but then you had high school guys too. So like, how is that contrast of like, I need to, to obviously gear my session towards whatever Mac needs, but then I'm also really trying to help develop these high school players as, as players. You know what I mean? Like a lot of more small sided games probably with high school, but then maybe a little bit more. Yeah. I don't know. Give, give me your opinion there. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. So all my high school group stuff is, like small side games. So my, it's funny since, since I've started to do that over the last year, my high school guys have loved working out. Like they'll like hit me up nonstop trying to work out now. So it's been cool seeing that. Um, but actually Mac, obviously we do some of the like catered skill stuff that he needs, but he loves just playing two on one really. So sometimes I'll, this is kind of to the point we we're just talking about. Sometimes I'll come into the workout with a whole plan. He'll just be like, let's play two on one. So it's like, as a trainer, what am I going to say? Like, no, we need to work on this. So right. sometimes it's literally just, I guard him, my boy, like we set up like a, like a dummy defender. And then my boy plays the big in the drop. We just play two on one for 45 minutes. Right. And like, that's the workout sometimes. So, I mean, if, if that, that's what I'm kind of, that's what we were just talking about. Like, is that okay? Or should I impose my will and say, no, we got to work on this. I think a balance of both is what is necessary but 100 percent, and obviously it depends on like what you did that week or yeah. like how he's been playing or whatever <clears throat> how do you feel like he's progressing like if he needs to be better like if he needs to improve his shooting or something it's like well sure we could do a, a two-on-one session <laughs> but maybe we should get some more shots up after this or something like that but i i, I get what you're saying but honestly like <laughs> he's he's the type of player because if you watch Kyrie work out that's pretty much all he does two-on-one three-on-one and like max is the type of player where he's so creative that I mean, that's just – that's how he's going to get better, just being – letting him flow and freestyle kind of in that environment. So, obviously, we get his shots up and stuff like that. But No, 100%. That's, it's interesting, though, that he likes the two-on-one. Like, it, do you – I don't know if you had this conversation with him, but do you know if you were able to get, like, either more, like, interns or bodies or whatever and get more of a – like a small side of game environment, do you think he would like that? Or do you think he would like more of the kind of dummy, but still making de decisions? You know what I mean? I think, I think he would. We don't, we play live. We play, if you watch yeah. my videos, it's, it's two on one. We're trying to get stops. Like he, yep. it's on go. So yeah, no, that there's actually this, this TikTok account I've seen. I don't know if you've seen, it's called like the real stick or something. The real eye mm -hmm. stick. Have you seen it or no? Yeah. So he's at the guy who came up with that. His name is Noah LaRoche. He's actually from my hometown and he's, Oh wow. Yeah, because I, I saw those videos and I loved what I saw and I actually tagged Mac and I was like, this is what we got to do next time. He was like, let's do it. So that's kind of. um, Yeah, I thought that was dope. Whatever. whatever I, who is there? Is it a trainer or it's just like the stick that he invented or what is it? So it's obviously like like the founder of all of it. His name is Noah LaRoche and he came up with the company Integrity Hoops okay. and he put together like a massive intern program and would like videographers actual interns for basketball so like they they have bodies out there you know what i mean like as you can yeah. see and then they they equipped them with these like the real stick so they yeah. have a little bit more length so they can block or steal the ball or whatever and then they put pennies on they just basically play and i think it's it's obviously it, it's a good environment bro for for pro guys because they get they have to make decisions it's not like you're really putting them at an injury or a risk for injury because i mean you don't have other random people just playing with them like you have interns trying to help them get better and they've watched right. film and they've dissected it so it's actually he's he's actually a really good trainer and if you see those videos you see guys like paul george kyrie irving in there like blake griffin russell westbrook so i think i think that kind of stuff works it's, it's funny that like the real stick i like that one and then paul favorite just came out with his stuff too i saw that that one that one looked dope actually i know bro with the pad and then it has a hand on it too so it's yeah i actually might invest into either either one of those but yeah i i like that tool um what's gonna be my next question uh 
that's just that's just something that I thought about a couple of times, like small set of games with other pro guys. Like, I wonder how obviously guys that like to compete, like you're saying, Mac, maybe he would love it. But other guys, I feel like might not want to take the chance for injury. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it depends. Um, like even when I was with Lamar, we didn't do a lot of live stuff. I think I think it's hard because they all want to go live and because they're all competitive and just want to play. But then they also know in the back of their minds that they're worth millions of dollars and it's not worth going live. So I think it's kind of that that fine balance um, between both. But I, I know I mean some guys probably remember Yurik was saying when he works with his some of some of his pro guys they never go live. So it's, I think it's just, it just depends on the player, honestly. Not nah, for sure. And I think obviously if you get like a good balance of your skill work, but then they obviously always play too, like five on five, they have runs and they're playing against other pro level guys. So they're, they're getting their decisions and they're getting their, I mean, obviously small set of games, but it's like <laughs> bigger sense. Like they, they actually get to play the game of basketball. So I think if you, if you dose those both correctly, like obviously there's a reason these guys are, are improving every summer. Yeah. So like Lamar's days, pretty much, we would just get shots in the morning and then we'd drive like 40 minutes and go do pro runs somewhere in like Philly. So that's kind of what you just said. Yeah. He's getting both. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then what was the contrast, if there was any, between like Lamar and, and Mac, like what were, what were the sessions yeah. like there? Well, so Lamar was, was actually interesting. So the first, I was with him for five weeks, week one, I was just, helping rebound and defend with his, he has his own trainer, right? So I'm always trying to be a sponge, just trying to help anyone. So my friend connected me with him because he needed an extra rebounder um, while he was in Philly. So week one, I helped with his trainer. Then weeks two and three, the Cavs player development coaches were actually in town. So again, I was kind of rebounding, defending, and then they were gone and he was home for a couple more weeks. So I kind of got to run things in weeks four and five. And we went to New York City for the weekend. Um, just to mix things up, go to the MBPA. But it was one of those things like we've been talking about. Was I going to change what we were working on in weeks four and five? Like, no. So I pretty much did exactly what the Cavs coaches and his trainer were doing. Um, just because I felt like it wasn't really my place to kind of impose what I thought, even though there were some things I would have liked to do differently. So again, that's that question of maybe in a year when I feel more comfortable, I can do that. I don't know. But yeah. yeah no nah, that's that's tough whenever you have like that situation specifically seems tough yeah. too because it's like three weeks you saw exactly what they did they're gone you have two more weeks I could probably tweak some things but at the same time I don't I like you don't want to overstep a NBA caliber organization so that <laughs> I can see how that one would be tough but yeah. that's pretty cool bro to have to have five weeks just immersed in that environment with him no, it was really sure. cool. He's like the the best dude I've met, honestly. So he's I'm I think he's gonna have a great year. It's gonna be the Cavs are gonna be really good. It's gonna be exciting. So bro, I'm I'm thinking the Cavs will be nice this year, bro. I how how are you feeling feeling about Philly? I mean, it's I think it's all dependent on Harden. He looks like he's been working really hard this summer. So um, I, I agree. I think we're we're as we go as far as Harden takes us. Cause I think Joel and Max are gonna give you what and Tobias will give you what they give you, but if, if Harden's kind of back to his MVP self, it's, it could be scary. So I think, I, I think the Celtics are going to win the chip if I had to say, but. Well, I have to see, bro. Obviously they didn't, they didn't switch up much and they added a couple, couple of solid pieces. So we'll, we'll see. I think I am interested to see, obviously if the Nets stay healthy, they're going to be tough to beat, but. Cause I mean, they got obviously Katie and, and Kyrie, but they got guys like Joe Harris coming back. So many good teams, honestly. Yeah, no, I really it, like the the league is in is in a good spot right now. There's there's plenty of good teams. Um, but to continue, so again, kind of from a player's perspective, having guard these guys, right? You're you're picking things up from these players just having to guard them. Like at yeah. now, from an offensive standpoint, coming to play at a college level, a D three level like that, I feel like you're able to really apply everything that you've learned just yeah. obviously training but defending these guys too, talking to these guys like how do you feel like that's improved you as a player and how do you feel like actually let's just start there how, how do you feel like that's improved you as a player so far yeah it's interesting I feel like I talk about this a lot so in those in those times where I'm working them out I'm still working myself out but it's not as rigorous as it usually would be because I'm on court playing defense against them and I don't want to kill my body but 
I feel like I get the most, like, that's my, that's when I see my most improvement is when I'm helping them. So I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's just, I guess by seeing the way, just seeing the way they move and analyzing that like visually just helps me put it into play. Yeah, I think I'm a pretty visual learner, I think. So sometimes I don't even need to rep it out, rep it out. And I just kind of then put it into play. Like when I play pickup, I start doing things that I usually wouldn't have done just cause I, well, like when I went to watch, there was a pro run, it was Lamar, the Morris brothers, um, Jordan Hall who's on the Spurs, a couple other pros. And just by watching these guys, you, you definitely pick up on some reads and things of that nature um, that I now see in my game in 505. So, yeah. Not for sure. And I, it's, I think it's, it's obviously cool because one of your goals is to play professionally, right? Yeah, I think so. So I think it's obviously a unique opportunity to see where you kind of match up with guys of that caliber. So where, like, where do you, have, have there been days where you're like, I'm just, I'm just not ready. Like there, there's just no oh. chance. Well, there's levels. Like when I went to the overseas showcase in Vegas, um, yep. I held my own. I was pretty much middle of the pack, but I could definitely play with those guys. But when you when you start playing one on one with Mac and like mm -hmm. we actually have a video, we're not we're probably not going to release it. But like we played one on one on one and like it's just it's different. Like we weigh the same weight too, like 195. I think we both are. And like he's just just has different strength. I can't even explain. Yeah. It. But no, I mean, well, I'll still talk shit and tell him I'll, I'll beat him, but no, it's, it's a different level for sure. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I think, I think I could definitely hold my own on, on a court, but I don't know. It's, it's tough. Nah, but I mean, like you said, obviously there's different levels to it, but if you're it, like, if the level is here with Mac, then obviously if you're, you know, right there, then maybe that means other overseas guys, like you're either right there with them or you could even surpass. So I think, like that's that's like a unique uh scale for you if you continue or as you continue to work with guys like that and are able to even play ones because i don't know if you'll be able to play ones with every single pro guy <laughs> you train no it it is interesting but from what i've seen the nba guys are just on another level right um so it's i mean that's why there's only 450 of them so not nah, for for sure but i from what i saw like that showcase I think the the first game wasn't like your best performance, but then yeah. second game you turn around had like twelve or yeah, yeah twelve like handful of rebounds. Look looked like you were you were playing solid, bro. Second game I played great. First for first and third game I was I was not great. Um, it was I was tired. Like I, these are excuses. But, like I was exhausted. It was a new basketball that we were using the overseas ball, but um, no, it was it was a good experience. It definitely showed me that I could hold my own with those guys. So. Yeah. Uh, and that's and that's good bro so i think my next question is now that you're back on campus and you know had a phenomenal off season and summer um how like what is your what is your mentality going into the season is it different is it is it similar like what are your goals for yourself and the team this year yeah so i guess i'll start with with personal goals i want to be a division three all-american that's that's kind of my main thing, like, but I know this kind of ties into team goals. Like, I know I'm not going to accomplish that if we don't win. So, like, I really just need to do, like, what I, why I've been trying so hard as a leader is really galvanizing everyone to understand how hard it is to win. Like, we had nine wins last year was there's no worse feeling. So, like, just in these, in, like, these 6 a.m. lifts, I'm trying to wake up every day with the most energy, like, positive energy just bringing the good vibes. Cause I'm trying to show these guys, like you need to have this mindset. If we, if we wake up at 6am, we're like, Oh, we, we got to do these sprints or we got to do that. You're not, it's not going to translate. So just trying to set the tone now. And then leading into the season, just, just really taking it one game at a time. And, you know, yeah, just, I want to win. That, that's all. So I'm, I'm trying to do everything I can to do that. And then I know my individual accolades will take care of itself uh, if we get wins. So. Not for sure, bro. Cause I know, I know last year at the end of the, the season, you were saying that you, you had, you had a good year as far as a, a leader, um, like offensively and, and, you know, your season in general, from what I saw from the stats and, and, and the video, everything that you posted about basically looked like you had a good season as a player, but also like from a leadership standpoint, you said that you grew a lot, but I think that this year, it'll, it'll be even better. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're in a position where you're, 
I feel like you've grown as a trainer and you've, you just continue to grow as a player. And like every single day you're, you're working to better yourself. So it's going to be hard to not be a good leader. And I think, I think, I think we mentioned this last time too, but like seeing your social media, seeing the the time and the effort that you put in to post kind of your journey, like guys on your team are going to see that and they're going to recognize that, appreciate it. And like that kind of helps with the buy-in with like, with your leadership, you know what I mean? So I think, I think this year will be really good for you, bro. Yeah, for sure. And one, one thing that I'm really working on, because it's funny, my strength coach last year actually said to me, how often have you studied leadership? And I never really thought of it that way. And I never did. So he gave me a book called the dichotomy of leadership. I read that and ever since I've kind of started diving into it. Now I'm actually in my, in the master's program, I'm taking two leadership courses and my, my head coach has a leadership thing. So it's kind of like a leadership crash course right now. Um, and, but one, one of the main things I think I'm really trying to work on is when to say stuff and when to not say stuff. Right. So for example, I'm a guy who believes in you're only as strong as your weak link. Whereas some other people might not think that some other people might think that kind of let them be and, and just focus on the, on the main guys who, who matter. So my coach actually came up with a really good analogy. It's like, say there's the five starters or like the five main guys, then there's, 10 guys on a boat and then there's five the five guys who don't really care right so there's 20 guys Mm -hmm. as those five main guys how do you get those 10 guys in the boat to jump off and swim to your side not swim to the side who doesn't care yeah because on a team of especially 29 guys it's impossible to have all 29 care as much as the top couple guys right so i think what i'm really focusing on is how do i get those middle 10 guys to jump on my side and really get that mentality um, and with that comes a lot of different communication styles, a lot of different, different ways of showing, like e- exhibiting leadership. Um, some guys I can get on a lot and talk to other guys I kind of have to approach in a different way. So yeah, it's been, it's been really interesting to say the least. But. Not for sure. And I, I had Ethan Koza on and we talked all things Hi. emotional intelligent. Uh, yeah, nah, he's, e- Ethan's a really good dude and he, he takes emotional intelligence to a different degree. <laughs> Um, but that's what that's all about, right? Like learning the tonality, like learning when and how to say certain things to, to whoever you're saying. And that's so applicable to life for us as trainers, how we communicate with our, with our athletes to our clients matters a lot. I, I, it, whenever we get to a situation, if like, whenever we have our own companies or whatever, and maybe we want our own gyms or internship programs like how are we going to communicate with those individuals how do we get the most out of them so this is like you said a crash cord to leadership and yeah you get a, a phenomenal opportunity to help out fr- like it and it's funny because I, I was i was talking about earlier how obviously i'm not too much older than these guys and same with you yeah but like the 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 jump between 18 and, and 22 is way bigger than you think yeah, it's like I'll, I'll see these guys interact or just do their own thing and i'm like you're like still such a kid you know what yeah. i mean and i'm like I, obviously like i have my my days when i'm a kid too and i'm not trying to sound like this old wise man but like right. like four years is a huge difference because i feel like i mean even from like freshman year of high school to senior year of, of high school you you learn a lot but definitely in your in your college years 18 to 22 is like you learn a lot so we forget that they're still very young at, at heart <laughs> yeah no you you really do and it's hard because I feel like I'm a pretty loud guy and like outspoken so one thing that I'm kind of working on is like not always saying stuff right away so the other day like a couple of freshmen were arguing and like doing kind of freshman things like bickering whereas me and a couple of my upperclassmen teammates would probably never do and I found myself butting in right away and I was like we don't do that here like you guys got to learn how to communicate effectively if you want to um, like if we want to have a successful season but I think I've caught myself almost butting in too much now to where I'm trying to be that father figure is not the right word but just be that like senior adult leader and I think sometimes it can it could probably go in one ear out the other because like oh here he goes again talking so I'm really working on like finding the balance of when I when I talk and when I don't um and also it, it's hard because I want everyone to like me and it's like as a leader you just you can't ex- like expect everyone to like you so that's that's another thing that's tough but 
Not for sure. I've trust me. I've I've dealt with the same thing, and I and I am right now. Like, ideally, everybody does like me, but at the same time, I I have come to terms that not everybody's gonna like me. Yeah. In certain situations or in general, and I, for for me, it's the same thing as as a coach. Like I I, I need some sort of level of respect, right? Because if I'm gonna prescribe them a training program or like on, on court or off court, if we're in the weight room or if we're if we're working on skill on the court, right? Like there needs to be some level of respect and they need to believe in what we're doing. Right. So how do I get that? Well, we, we got to make it fun. They have to respect me. Like I have to build a relationship with every single one of these players because every single one of them is different. Does it help to have, like for you, you have obviously the guys that were there last year and they're like, they'll advocate for you because you were their captain. They saw what you can do and they followed you since. So that helps. But at the same time, these freshmen have never seen you. They don't know who you are. They don't know how to interact with you. So it's like, well, who is this guy yelling at me to, to not dance in the locker room like <laughs> so it's, it's definitely it's it's definitely a process and it's interesting in college or even pro because i mean you you have a different set of individuals every single year so it's kind of you gotta pitch yourself every year yeah no for sure um actually i want to ask a <clears throat> another question regarding mac i've seen you do some of the vert uh workouts and some of the workouts with his with his pops right yeah let me let me know how how difficult were those and do are you are you continuing those at all uh, by yourself so um well i'll get to that yeah i mean they were probably the two hardest workouts i've ever done in my life um if you've seen the youtube videos my friend nate threw up um literally on like the first one of the first exercises one of them was set up four boxes and you did it was timed. You did 10 jumps on each of the first three. And then the fourth box, you did like weighted jumps. It was like, I think it was four. So it was 68 total jumps and you got time. So you had to go as fast as you could. Um, like that was, that was crazy. And obviously just the, like, you know, the dot drill, have you seen that one? Yep. So the dot drill, uh, it, I don't know, it was, it was really cool, but we were, we were dead. If you, if you watch the videos, um, we were like, yeah, just laying on the floor dead after, but it was really cool. I haven't been able to do them since because we have our, we have workouts five days a week now. So right. body's, body's kind of hurting, but uh, definitely in the off season, I'm probably going to, going to want to do it. So I can, yeah. I can see like that basement is, is, is so dope. Like that's, it's just like an old school, like Rocky kind of grind mentality. Um, that's where he was built. So Nah, bro. If, uh, I, I think I don't. I don't know if I saw the actual YouTube video, but I saw a short where it was like I almost puked during this workout, and I was like, "Damn." Yeah. <clears throat> no, nah, that's that's cool, bro. I feel like that was that was such a great situation. You were really immersed in in his experience too, and for for you to like like communicate and and obviously interact with his pops too. That was that's pretty cool. Um, last portion that I wanted to talk about is content. Um, I feel like. You, your content's always been good, but I feel like it's been like you've been really grinding past like, I mean, all summer and then even a little bit in the spring. Talk to me a little bit about that because traveling, like you said, eight hours to Gate City, Vegas, like all over the country, really. Like to talk to me about figuring out how to get in content. How do you maintain a, a consistent schedule and how do you continue to bust content out in general? Yeah, so first I got to shout out my boy Nate. Nate came with me um, to Gate City both times and Vegas. And just just having someone hold the camera for you is is huge. So Nate filmed pretty much all that stuff. So shout out Nate. And then just staying consistent with it is like really making sacrifices. Whenever I have downtime, instead of watching TV or Netflix, it's editing a video or it's like posting a TikTok or a, or a short and it gets really hard. Like if you, if you notice the last couple of weeks, I haven't posted that much because sometimes I just need like a week or two break. Um, Cause it gets like a full-time job, but it's actually something I'm working on trying to become like get on a more consistent schedule. Um, usually it's just kind of all over the place. And I just, I just post, but one thing that's helped me is documenting like pretty much everything. Um, so in a couple of weeks, I'm going to start back up the, the documentary for my season. And when I have so much long form content, makes it really easy. Actually, I post the long form content as a YouTube video. And then I just cut all that up into shorts, reels and, um, and TikToks. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's been pretty cool to, to see the growth. It's definitely like, 
it's a grind, but I mean, if you stay consistent, the, the cool part for me is like seeing how many people you can impact and, and inspire, like without even knowing it, like I'll have people just reach out to me all the time saying they, my content inspires them. And I'm like, really it does. And it's just, just cool to see that. Cause I'm just trying to share kind of my life, but um, yeah. So no, nah, it's, I, I think it's dope, bro. Um, hold up one second. Do you mind ending this and then hopping right back in the same zoom? Cause oh. it's about to end. Yeah, it's perfect. Cuts off after 40 minutes. Yeah, bro. I gotta I gotta upgrade to the yeah <laughs> to the uh to the unlimited. I've just been lazy about it. Yeah. No, but what I was what I was gonna say is um the long form uh, long form content is is huge actually, and I didn't really think about it. But like you said, if you take 20 minutes of of content, you can just clip up. I mean, Instagram, you need like no more than like a 30 second video nowadays. And even that's a little long, you know what I mean? Like some people won't even watch an entire 30 second video. So if you have a 20 minute long YouTube video, you can just clip up the entire week based off of that. And then just have like a handful of other things. That's, that's good, bro. And I think like TikTok is steadily growing. You're at what? 12 and a half or 12.7 thousand. I think, yeah, like 12.9 or something. I, I've yeah. been slacking this. So I'm trying to, what about, I'm actually trying a new strategy. Now my friend at Penn state has been killing it. He, uh, he just started this whole movement called kick the sheets where I don't know if you've seen it. He basically gets up at 5. AM and like literally kicks his bed sheets and like gets up, starts like moving. And like, he started this whole movement. He grew a hundred thousand followers in a month. Wow. But ba basically what he does is just vlog his entire day on TikTok. So it could be as simple as like eating some food with his friends and like, they'll just make up short videos. So I actually started a couple of days ago. I'm just going to try to post like literally whenever I'm doing something, just post a, a video on TikTok not not overthinking it not making like not caring about the quality so. right and i yeah i think especially with tiktok it's like it's more so quantity rather than quality right because if you put out just a surplus of of content something's yeah. gonna something's gonna stick that's that's interesting though to grow to a hundred thousand in a month is crazy but that's crazy. i mean that's kind of the beauty of <laughs> of tiktok you can do that because of the algorithm and then I know you've been uh, you've been utilizing shorts a lot too. You you mentioned that in the group chat. Yeah, shorts shorts have been great. Um, the only thing, so I'm I'm trying to I don't know if you're on YouTube at all, but uh, YouTube you need like in order to monetize you need four thousand watch hours, mm. but you don't get watch hours from the shorts. You only get it from long long form videos. So, but the shorts the shorts get you a lot of views and a lot of uh, subscribers, which can then you could parlay those into the long form viewers. So I don't know, just, yeah. just testing it all out really. So. Yeah. I mean, bro, you, <clears throat> I think, I think you're doing everything right. And I think if there's anybody that I know that's like deserves to, to kind of blow up, it's definitely you. Cause you've been on that slow grind for, <laughs> for so long. Like I've, I've been consistent ish on Instagram, but it's like, Sometimes I have, like, I think recently I went like a month without posting and it was a big mistake because my, my engagement went down crazy, but yeah. it is that what happens. it is. It, it, right. It happens, but you, you're consistent on all platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. So yeah, it, my bad. Go ahead. No, I mean, the way that I think about it, like you just said, taking a month off, um, like I, I'm really thinking of, of this as a 2030 thing, not a 2023 thing. So right. what I mean by that. What like how could this could maybe help you if you want to take like I just took a couple weeks weeks off from it but I'm not mad at myself or judging myself because I have eight years that's kind of how I view it so it's like I'm not saying I need ten thousand followers by January I'm saying by 2030 like this I want this to be able to make me do whatever I want pretty much so it's like but by having that eight year patience time horizon I think allows me to take a couple weeks off and just reset the fresh. So. not nah, for sure whenever you view it from like a long-term standpoint you you don't have to be so hard on yourself but definitely yeah. I, I was kicking myself a little bit like last week i was like damn because like the quad like the content is literally the same exact thing i was getting like i was getting pretty decent views for for my page 
while I was yeah. in Miami. And then after that, I kind of took a like a month off and I was like, same quality content. It's just the engagement is down, but it's just got to get back in that schedule with the consistency. <clears throat> but viewing it from a long-term standpoint obviously helps. And I, I like that. Um, quick speed round. Yeah, let's do it. All right, bro. Let's think of all the guys that you've trained pro or uh, let's, let's say pro. So I actually don't know the lineup that you have, but if they were all to play ones, who, who do you think would come out on top? Are we talking guys that like I've been the main trainer or that I've helped with? Let's say main only, trainer. Like, let's, I, let's say main trainer. I mean, main, probably really like NBA guys, Mac, Lamar, trained Marcus Morris one time. I don't really like count that. Um, That's fair. I, I was I was thinking Marcus too, but it, if you don't want to count that, I I understand that. I mean, yeah, I uh, I don't know. Mac, Mac versus Lamar would be interesting. Uh, I'd I'd probably have to say Lamar just based on his size, but mm. I don't know. Mac Mac stuff one on one. So it's fair. Um, so of the summer, what do you think the highlight of the summer has been for you? Um, highlight of the summer. I think making relationships and, and connect, like I just felt like I met so many amazing people over the last year, really year, just by like getting out of my comfort zone. I think I went to like four different conferences. Mm. Like I was saying to, I feel like I was somewhere with my dad and I was like, it was, there was all these people there and I was like, I'm all networked out. I can't even talk to anyone. Like, I feel like I just went to so many different events, so many different in so many different cultures and met so many people. So that was definitely the highlight. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll be doing that again this year. So Hell yeah, you went to the Gary V uh, uh, conference too, right? That was crazy. <clears throat> that was crazy. So yeah, no, that, that looked like a good time. It was. Um, all right. If you had to choose for the rest of your career, if you could only shoot threes or you could only shoot mid range, what would you do? Threes. Half threes. To, it's funny because our coach really only only wants us to shoot threes and layups, and like half of my points last year were mid range pull ups. So it's a big adjustment, but I yep. kind of. I kind of agree with it. It's like you make three out of 10 threes as more points than four out of 10 mid range. So it's like, it's fair. Obviously the points. Yes. Like you, you would want the threes, but yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big mid range guy myself. So. I am too. I am too. So. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm trying to think of a, let's go strength. Would you go shot bar deadlift or back squat? Probably back squat. back squat. I'm not a I'm not a big lifter to begin with, but I don't love deadlift. It's fair. I'm I'm a big chat bar guy. <clears throat> We're actually doing front squats right now. Yeah. So like the ones where we go like this and like it's killing my wrists. I don't know. I don't know why, but yeah, a lot with with basketball players, the wrist is like so so weak. For honestly, I don't really understand why, but. It, a front squat is tough, but I think after – I'm sure you guys are in <clears throat> your very early phase of the, the program right now, so you guys will probably move up to, like, some sort of Olympic movement, a clean or a high pull or something. So I think yeah, whatever so you we do only, that phase. They only get six weeks with us in the preseason, and then we start practice. So then during the season, we'll probably lift once or twice a week. But yeah, we only have, like, three weeks left, actually. But And it's been really good. I feel like I've gotten a lot stronger already in, like, three weeks. So. Hell, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, start bench and trade because we don't we don't want to cut. Yeah. That's um, bro, I, I always want to put Steph Curry in there, but I'm like, I, I feel like we're always gonna have to start Steph, so we're not gonna do Steph. Let's do Darius Garland, Trey Young, and Chris Paul. For this season, yeah, we'll say current current season right now. Damn, that's tough. Um, I feel like I'll start Trey Young. Ah, oh, this is tough. Start Trey Young, bench Garland, trade CP. Just because, have you seen those highlights of Garland in, on Instagram? Bro, he's he's Garland's still, different. Garland's yeah, different. He's different. So I'm like. Even Lamar was saying, like, Garland's, like, the best player he's seen. I'm like, he's different. 
Him nah, and Mitchell he, are going to be crazy. Bro, I really think that they could be a crazy backcourt because I know, obviously, Mitchell had Mike Conley, but he's not Darius Garland. No. I, I'm interested to see how how Mitchell plays in that in that environment with that team because he has a really good team around him now. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. That's a tough question though. But no, Chris, right. Chris Paul's definitely top ten point guard ever. But got to trade him. No, nah, right now I think I, I I don't disagree with you. I think I think Trey Young's been a little bit more consistent with how how good he's been. So maybe I think if Darius has another really solid All Star level. Uh, year this year maybe it's like maybe i moved Darius to that starting position but i i like trade i I like trade the starting position um and then this one doesn't necessarily have to be speed round but uh what what is some advice that you would like to give to players out there trainers out there coaches just like one one piece of advice um i think i've kind of been been on this topic for the last couple weeks in my content a little bit like embracing the struggle so like no matter what obstacles get thrown your way and it's a lot easier said than done but like no matter what obstacles get thrown your way like kind of embracing it and realize that you're gonna come out stronger so like say you get an injury as a player like realizing that you're gonna come back stronger and it's for a purpose if you as a trainer maybe aren't making as much money or getting an NBA player at 22 years old like it's okay just keep grinding like if you really stay consistent and stay true to yourself, I think good things will happen. So yeah, that's kind of something I've really been been uh, been on lately. So, no, I love it, bro. Embrace the struggle is huge, and the perspective that you have in the face of adversity or the struggle is huge. That's really what defines you as a person. So I, I I like that a lot. And then lastly, what is what is next for for Danny Cooper for the trainer player? Um, obviously sure. the season's coming up, but let, let us know what's, what's going on. Yeah. So got the season coming up. Um, I, that, that another piece of advice I was going to say is really just trying to be present. Like, it's funny. I'll, I'll answer that question, but really just trying to focus on enjoying every single day. Cause I don't know if this is going to be my last year of college ball. I actually have two years left, so, um, we'll see what happens, but trying to enjoy every single day, be present. Um, but what's coming next, um, I have thoughts of potentially trying to walk on to a high major next year, um, depending on how this season goes. And then um, hopes of playing in Israel maybe in two years. So that's kind of like long-term, but, um, and then obviously continuing the building the training stuff, but uh, yeah, just trying to take it day by day. No, nah, and that's, I, I like that. I think I was asked a question like a couple months ago, like what's next for me. And I was like, honestly, I don't, like I, I like looking like a little bit into the future, but like years and years into the future, I, you never know what's gonna happen. So it's like I like I like like you said, I like to be present, play it by ear, go based I, off of I read what my this, situation is. Yeah, I read this article, cliche, but like be where your feet are. It's just like forget what happened in the past. Don't stress or worry about the future. Just literally just be in the present moment. It's actually helped me a lot in the last couple months. Um, just with my general like mental health and happiness too. So no nah, it, it does help a lot i don't know if you've read the book um the power of now i've i've seen it but i haven't read it no Re- really good book i i would definitely recommend that for you and any of the listeners it, same as that concept and it's it, it actually helped me a lot <clears throat> but danny that's that's really all i got for you bro i appreciate you hopping back on for the second time probably won't be the last <laughs> for sure no it was awesome chopping it up thanks for having me all right bro we are good, bro. What what else you got going on for the day? This is it done or? Yeah, I I'll just I'll cut this out. All right. Um, what else I got going on? I got.